الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين So far we talked about four of the women around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fatima bintu Asad, Rufayda al-Aslamiya, Khadija, the mother of the believers, and Zainab, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah, we will talk about Aisha bintu Talha, and if we have enough time, inshallah, we will talk also about Umm Ruman. Aisha bin Tutalha uh, is one of the women who witnessed and who lived in the golden Islamic time uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was alive. So she was a woman companion uh, who lived with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time, at his time. She was one of the uh, daughters of a very noble home. And uh, she, uh, she, she was so uh, uh, honored. She was known to be uh, a very good woman at her time. She was uh, lucky of all sights, and uh, uh, she was a very uh, uh, knowledgeable woman, and she, she got a very high status in her society regarding knowledge, uh, 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 the way she looks, and the place she lived in. So everything around her was uh, uh, amazing in a way that raised this amazing woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Aisha uh, a rare beauty. She was one of the most beautiful woman, uh, one of the most beautiful women around uh, at her time. As if you are looking at uh, uh, someone yani, who is unbelievably beautiful. Sayyidina Abu Huraira once saw her and he said about her, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَجْمَلَ مِنْ عَائِشَةَ بِنْتِ طَلْحَةَ I never, he said, so Sayyidina Abu Huraira said, I never saw a woman who is more beautiful than Aisha. Aisha bin Tutalha. She was the most beautiful woman at her time. She was. Uh, the daughter of an, uh, a very well-known companion of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was one of the companions, one of the pioneers who believed in Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was one of the six uh, of the companions of the uh, people whom uh, they were to be ad to, to advise and to give to give advice. Uh, he was one of the six of the Ashab Shura, and he was uh, when he embraced Islam. He was one of the first eight people to embrace Islam. He was one of the 10 people whom Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam witnessed that 
they are of the people of uh, uh, paradise. So uh, this was her father and uh, he was very well known for being the most generous and he had a lot of uh, uh, good and amazing uh, uh, incidents that happened that showed his generosity. So uh, talking about this amazing uh, woman about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of uh, uh, when he lived. Uh, let's talk about her father, her mother, her grandfather, and so on. So we'll start with uh, her father. His name was Talha, Talha ibn Ubaidillah ibn Uthman al-Taymi al-Qurashi al-Makki al-Madani al-Mubashari bil-Jannah. So he was one of the people of the 10 people whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam witnessed that he is of the people of paradise. He was uh, uh, a very uh, strong and courageous knight and he, he, he witnessed all the incidents with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was very generous. And he narrated 38 hadith uh, uh, for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of his generosity, he used to uh, slaughter sheep and uh, camels during the battles. So he slaughtered during the Battle of Tabuk. And uh, at that time, the uh, army was in so much. Uh, uh, hunger, so uh, he was the one who saved them, and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Anta talhatu al-fayyad, so you are talha, the, the generous, the, the most generous, and during, uh, on the day of Uhud, also during the battle of Uhud, he also slaughtered and he fed the army. And, and on that day, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Talha tul khayr. Talha, the, the one who provides khayr for everyone. And uh, on the day of Hunayn, he, was, he showed all generosity. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Anta talha tul jood. So you are talha, the generous. So he was very well known for his spending and for slaughtering and for feeding the army of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, her mom is Umm Kulthum. And who is Umm Kulthum? Umm Kulthum is the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. So her mom, is the sister of Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers and the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she studied with her sister and she, she also narrated hadith, so many hadith uh, from, uh, uh, from her sister Aisha radiallahu anha. Now, if we talk about her grandfather, so who is the father of her mother? We all know the 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 the, the one who is most loved by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is the head of the companions. He is the master of the companions. He is the the most righteous of the companions. He is the first one to be to to embrace Islam, and he is the one with the unbelievable, with the amazing uh, uh, positions that he took, and with the support that he showed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the most important one was his. Uh, sacrificing himself and 
traveling with Sayyidina Muhammad, migrating with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he left his family, he left his kids, and he went with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gave each one a, a task and everyone fulfilled and everyone did what their father, what Sayyidina Abu Bakr asked them to do. This was her grandfather. So who is her grandmother? Her grandmother is As-Sabatu Bintul Hadrami, and she was an, uh, uh, a very strong woman. She embraced Islam and she uh, migrated, and she was one of those who was pleased to be with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is her grandmother of, to her uh, father's side. Now her, her maternal grandmother, uh, her name is Habiba, Habiba bint Kharijat ibn, ibn Zaydin al-Ansariya, and she was the wife of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the wife of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. She, she embraced Islam and she pledged to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, till now, we are talking about the genealogy. We are talking about this amazing uh, uh, family where uh, Aisha radiyallahu anha was raised. So when we hear the uh, good things about her, then we know where, where this comes from. Now, her mother, her, her aunt, as we just mentioned, her mom's sister is Aisha radiyallahu anha, the mother of the believers, the, uh, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr siddiq radiyallahu anha. And of course, uh, half of our religion is taken from Aisha radiyallahu anha. Uh, we all know her uh, uh, rank. We all know her position, how, uh, uh, how close she was to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she learned, uh, she learned from her aunt a lot. Her other aunt is Asma Ubintu Abi Bakr. So Asma also, uh, the is an amazing woman, strong, very, very, very loving, sincere. She's the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. She was one of the uh, of the people who narrated hadith to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she has many merits, a lot of good uh, 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 merits, and uh, a lot of good things we know about Asma bintu Abi Bakr. May Allah be pleased with them all. Her uncles are Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Muhammad, and uh, they are all uh, the, the sons of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And now we have to know that Aisha radiallahu anha uh, was an orphan herself. So when her father uh, was killed. Aisha was uh, very young, and she was living her childhood, her innocent childhood. She didn't. She didn't know of this life, anything except what all kids know, just playing, sleeping, uh, innocence. That's that's how she was when uh, her father when her father passed away, and. Uh, Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha always cared for her daughter Aisha. And uh, she, she, her mom all, used always to see how beautiful, how angelic the, the face of Aisha radiallahu anha. So she was the most beautiful a woman at her time. So since her early childhood, that was very amazing thing in her. So whoever looks at her, well, she will melt in their heart. So she, her mom took very good care of Aisha. 
and she would always uh, hug her and uh, uh, be be a very amazing mom to her. So she, her mom, took care of her after the death of uh, of the father, and she was a mom and a dad. So Aisha radiallahu anha now is getting older and years and years passed. She was very happy. And uh, when her father died, he left so much money for her, a lot of wealth. So she was living a comfortable life. And uh, uh, that's what we know about her childhood, that she was an orphan, but a happy child, a child who lived very comfortably. Everything was, was for her. Now, Aisha radiallahu anha got into the age of getting married. So her cousin, Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, uh, proposed to her. And that was with the uh, uh, advice of Aisha Umul Mu'mineen radiallahu anha. So, however, Aisha bintu Talha did not, yani was not so interested in that marriage. And she was not interested in that, in her cousin. Okay, he's her cousin, but she, she wasn't interested in getting married to him. But uh, the mother of the believers, her aunt Aisha, uh, talked to her about it, and she even uh, made it. Uh, she, she, uh, yani convinced her to get married to her cousin. So she did. She accepted, and uh, she got married to him. And there she had she had four children, four boys with with him and one daughter. So she had Umran, Talha, Abdurrahman, and Abu Bakr, and uh, her daughter was called Nafisa. Uh, all her children were raised very, very, very nicely in a blessed uh, uh, way. And uh, uh, her, her son, Talha, was very well known amongst the generous people. So he took it from his father. So Talha was one of the most generous people at his time. And he was, he was uh, a loving person, a caring person, and he was trustworthy. Azubair ibn Azubair ibn Bakkar narrated that once Urwa ibn Azubair, you know, Urwa was one of the uh, uh, few um, jurisprudence of Medina. He wanted to travel and he had some money. So he divided his money in two parts and he gave Talha the the son of Aisha radiallahu anha, his other part. So he traveled to, to Sham and uh, when he uh, was done, he came back and he asked for his money. Talha immediately returned his money while the other person uh, did not. So he said, uh, Arwa, Arwa said two, two lines of poetry. فما استخبأت في رجل خبيئا كدين الصدق لو ينسب عتيق ذو الأحساب أكرم ما تراه وأصبر عند نائبة الحقوق. So uh, I gave two people. Uh, I, I I gave the 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 person some money to to uh, keep it uh, there as an amana and. This person who was of good genealogy, 
he was a generous person, he gave it immediately back. So Talha ibn Aisha was a very, very good. Now, if we want to talk about Aisha radiallahu anha, of course, the, if we want to talk about all the children we can, uh, uh, just to mention that her daughter Nafisa got married to Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. And uh, all, all uh, Aisha's uh, 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 sons, all her children, they were of they were good people and uh, they were uh, trustworthy people. So the to, to go back to, to the to the very beginning of her marriage, as I just mentioned, Aisha radiallahu anha was not interested in getting married to her cousin. And she lived all her life with him and satisfied. She did not like him. And she, she would be very happy with her uh, friends sitting, chatting, uh, uh, laughing. And if he is mentioned that, uh, okay, Umm Amran, your husband is here. He just came home she would feel very saddened and she wouldn't, uh, even, even though she didn't like him, she couldn't just keep it to herself. So her friends knew that she was not happy with her husband. She, 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 didn't, she wasn't a good wife to him. And she had a lot of conflicts with him. And once she had a problem with him, so she left her home and she went to, live, to stay with Aisha radiallahu anha. And she stayed with her about four months. So Aisha radiallahu anha was a wise woman. And she said, she said, I. I don't like this for you. This is not acceptable. So some of them told him, just divorce her. But Abdullah was in love with his wife. Imagine if a husband loves his wife and she doesn't love him. How, how the life is not, it's not a happy life. And uh, she went on. She went back and she went on with his love, with her life with him, but she was not happy. And uh, she, she wouldn't talk to him much. She wouldn't have, she wouldn't show the, uh, that she's a good wife because she did not like him. But her husband was in love with her. So sometimes he would show that he is accepting that, and sometimes he would show that he is not happy with that. But she, in short, she wasn't happy with her husband. And time passes, and uh, this life uh, goes up and down, and uh, she did not like him until one day he passed away. She did not show that she missed him. So Aisha radiallahu anha was uh, sad that uh, her nephew passed away, but his wife did not. And she would always talk to her and she would tell her that's not acceptable. So when, uh, you know, when uh, the time after the death passed away, the uh, men would come just to propose for, uh, for, for Aisha. And 
as I just started, that Aisha was the most beautiful woman at her time. So everybody wanted to get married to her. And at, their, at that time, when a woman is widowed, then men uh, would, would rush to uh, try to, to gain her, actually. And what do you think of a woman who is a very nice, very uh, happy, very, uh, very beautiful woman. So they, the, the, this was the woman whom they wished they can get married to. Uh, so her beauty attracted everyone, men and women. And uh, she was she was described uh, in details, and uh, they uh, she, uh, her eyes, her eyebrows, her her uh, nose, her mouth, her neck, everything was described, and uh, she was she was a very well known woman. And they say she was the most beautiful woman in Hijaz in Saudi Arabia, all. And she was talk, her her beauty was mentioned by many people, many people, well known people, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Hajar, Al Dhabi, Hamad, uh, all of them described her beauty. And, and, and described her and said the the least they said about her that she was the most beautiful. So Aisha now is being proposed to, and the one who got her, who proposed to her, was Musab ibn Zubayr. Musab was a very very beautiful man. And he was the prince of Iraq. And he was one of the most beautiful uh, young men of Quraysh. So uh, above all of that, he was a very courageous knight, a fighter. He was uh, a, a, a very generous person. He had a very high rank uh, position in uh, amongst his people. He was always happy. So Musab got married to Sukaina, radiallahu anha, and she was, it is, he said that she she was a, uh, yeah, they they lived happily. So it's a long story how he got married to her, but uh, there are so many incidents. There are so many nice uh, incidents about her. Let's just skip a little bit about that and talk more about about uh, Aisha radiallahu anha. So Aisha bint Talha was very generous and we know that she uh, inherited a lot of money from her father. So when she wanted uh, to go to Hajj, they they said that it was uh, uh, a caravan that she took with her. Um, and the caravan had so many, so many howders, so many. Um, camels where the woman would sit on and it was uh uh it was a good uh, a good and amazing cottage that would she would uh go to uh to to, to hajj 
So uh, if we now move to uh, to talk about her knowledge, we we know that she was very knowledgeable, and she she got her knowledge from as I as I mentioned from her mother and from her aunts so she got the pure knowledge okay now uh, Aisha radiallahu anha she was known known to be that uh, uh, she she studied and she learned from uh, the knowledge that she uh, got from her mom, as I mentioned, and from her aunt Aisha radiallahu anha. So Aisha bin Tutalha uh, was uh, she was a good person, even though she did not like her husband, but that that was one, one issue between her and her husband. But in general, Aisha was a strong woman. She was a good woman and she was very generous. So like her father, their generosity was uh, very well known. So, Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, her death, uh, it's known that Aisha bin Tutalha uh, passed away uh, after the year 100 of Hijrah. And she uh, died in Al Madina al Munawwara. So, May Allah have mercy on Aisha, the strong woman, the generous woman, the knowledgeable woman who fulfilled the, uh, uh, the position that she had at her time. She was as uh, she, she had a very high rank position and she deserved that position. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on her, on her father, and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala unite them with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now moving to talk about Ummu Ruman radiallahu anha, if we ask who is this woman, she is bintu Amir ibn so who is this woman? Abdullah ibn Haris and his wife, Umm Ruman. Again, this woman was a beautiful woman. And she was a, a very uh, eloquent talking woman. She was known to be a righteous woman, an honest woman, and she was uh, uh, she was a good wife. So her father, uh, her husband Abdullah, uh, passed away. Her husband passed away, and he left Umm Ruman and her son behind. So who gets married to her? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu So he wanted to, uh, uh, to, to make it easy for her. He wanted to help her. He wanted to, he, he, he wanted to, to take care of her and of her son. SubhanAllah, he, he was known uh, as a generous man. He was known, Sayyidina Abu Bakr was, and a noble man. So he took care of Umru man and he was taking very good care of her and of her son. And of course, Umru man 
is the mother of Aisha radiallahu anha and Abdul Rahman radiallahu anha. So she is the mother of the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this blessed uh, family to enter Islam and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an was the first of the men who became a Muslim. And uh, at, at that time, when he, uh, when he first became a Muslim, he came back and he told her, told his wife about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And but Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for her before, before, she, uh, before Sayyidina Abu Bakr left him. So when he came and talked to her about Islam, she became she became a Muslim immediately. So she she became a Muslim at the very beginning, and they followed Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we all know that the the, the house of Sayyidina Abu Bakr was uh, the the place where Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would rest in and would. Uh, uh, he would love to be with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and his family. So she, Umm Ruman, was the best, uh, uh, the best example of the good wife. She supported her her husband. She elevated his uh, uh, his pains, and uh, she would uh, stand with him during the hard time, during the hardships that the Muslims. Uh, the very be at the very beginning of the time of the Islam they passed they passed to. So subhanallah, this was Umm Ruman at the very beginning of her of her uh, time. She was the first to, uh, of the first pioneers to become Muslims and the very uh, good wife to support her husband and to, uh, uh, to to back him up. Now, we all know that <clears throat> Umm Ruman uh, had uh, uh, a very good or a blessed position with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She's his mother-in-law. So this family got the honor of uh, uh, having Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as their son-in-law. And Aisha radiallahu anha was uh, a, very, uh, a very loving person. Now, the way that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam proposed to Aisha was through Khawla bintu Hakim radiallahu anha. So he mentioned he mentioned to Khawla that he is interested in getting married to Aisha. So Khawla went to Umm Ruman and she said to her, uh, ma min al -khayri wal -baraka. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a lot of blessings and a lot of khair. So Umm Ruman said, what is it? And Khawla told her that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent me to to propose to Aisha for him. Umm Ruman was very happy and she, she said, uh, I, I, I want to, but she said, wait, wait, I want to talk to Abu Bakr. So when she, when Abu Bakr came home, she said to him, Ya Abu Bakr, ma adkhalallahu alaykum min al khayri wal baraka. So she said the same, the same thing. And uh, 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 this uh, this woman Khawla said that to Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr said, "What is it?" She said, "Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent me to propose for to Aisha." And he said to her, "How how can he marry her? She is his his." Uh, uh, she is the, the the daughter of his brother because Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, uh, Abu Bakr were known to be brothers yeah, as brothers. So how she would be uh, good for him? How how that would be accepted? So uh, Khawla radiallahu anha went back to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said to him what Abu Bakr said. So he said to him, tell him, you are my brother in Islam 
and your daughter, uh, and I can marry your daughter. So Umm Ruman became the mother-in-law of the best uh, of the uh, uh, creatures of, Sayyid, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we know that Umm Ruman passed through a very harsh uh, test. And that was Haditha ifk the time, the, the uh, incident where the hypocrites um, uh, talked badly about Aisha radiallahu anha. So they wanted to, to uh, just uh, uh, talk badly about Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and about his uh, uh, life, about his wife, about his... Uh, 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 that about they they wanted to make bad things about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What was the position that Umar Uman took? Umar Uman, they are talking about her badly about her daughter, and. Her son-in-law is the prophet of Allah. And she knows that her daughter يعني, does not, will, will never ever do something like that. But she could not say anything. And at the beginning, they did not tell Aisha radiallahu anha about what, what was uh, going around, uh, around in the society in the, at that time. So when Aisha radiallahu anha later knew that, she cried and cried and cried, and she was, and she was blaming her mom how she she uh, she did not tell her about what people were talking about. So Umm Ruman said to her, uh, "Allah knows, Allah knows you." So. She, uh, she, it, it was hard for Umm Ruman to see her daughter like that. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, sent Jibreel alayhi salam with the uh, innocence certificate from, uh, of, of Aisha radiallahu anha, her mom just went directly to her and she said, go thank Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. go thank your husband. She said, no, I will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine how amazing this woman that Quran would be revealed to show her innocency, to show that she was innocent. So Umm Ruman, during that hardship time, during that fitna, she was a strong, uh, a patient, a determined. She was a woman. She was someone who believed deeply in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She knows her daughter, but she believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, uh, when she realized that uh, uh, she, uh, her daughter was innocent and her, her, her uh, and this was uh, revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by, by his messenger, her happiness, uh, and joy who wouldn't, who, she, she wouldn't know how to express that. She had all confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, Allah knows me and uh, it, it will be cleared. So this was Umm Ruman radiallahu anha. And when, uh, when she passed away, it was uh, the year 
six of Hijra, she passed away, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went down into her grave and he made istighfar for her. And uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma lam yakhfa alayka ma laqiyat ummu rumana fika wa fi, wa fi rasulik. So you, you Allah know what ummu ruman passed through for your sake and for, this, for my sake. And uh, uh, one of the ways that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes ummu ruman very, very briefly he said, من سره أن ينظر إلى امرأة من الحور العين فلينظر إلى أم رومان Whoever wanted to, to be pleased to look at one of the women of Jannah of the حور العين so he looks at أم رومان So with this uh, inshallah we had some highlight on Aisha bint Talha and أم رومان رضي الله عنهما and inshallah, until we meet next week, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.